You never watch porn? So I'm like a music gal. <laughs> what? Hi, I'm Jamie Lynn Sigler. And I'm Robert Eiler. And this is our new podcast, Not Today Pal. And they found out that the chicken had a tumor and it was like pus. Not your favorite? They're going to ask us a question about Sopranos. Let's split the difference and Jamie gets one point. Give Rob winner, his points. Like, why are you taking him away? This is what he does. You have no idea what's about to happen. I have no idea. I'm so excited, though. Available every Thursday, wherever you get podcasts. This week on First Date with Lauren Compton. Both of my complaints from the last two girls I dated, they were like, we don't feel needed by you. And in my head, I was like, yeah, because you're not. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I know simple math. I'm 35. Okay, I, I would have guessed even younger. It would take five. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you're good. What is the sweetest thing you've ever done for someone? Uh, I told them to delete my number. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm so excited to see you tonight. First date, baby. First date, I can't wait. First date. Welcome to another episode of First Date. With me as your host, Lauren Compton. Today we have a super special guest. He was born and raised in New York. He lived in Las Vegas as a professional poker player and he can eat an entire rotisserie chicken in one sitting. You may know him as AJ Soprano from The Sopranos, but he has transitioned to a full-time podcaster and has a podcast here at YMH Studios called Not Today, Pal. Give it up for Rob Eiler. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, that's the first time they ever clapped for me. Even when I did my first pod, they didn't clap for me. No. No. You got to earn is, it around this is here. Good. Yeah. Claps aren't given out. Yeah, you got them like uh, show dogs. I I you train them, them well. I give them yeah. treats. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, <laughs> they talk shit to me, but you got them clapping. If you and... bring them Terry Black's barbecue, they'll be your friend. Oh. So you know how so the way that this show is going to work right now is we we're going to talk about some dating stuff. I've got appetizer questions main course questions, and then a dessert question to sweeten it up at the end. And I'm going to call out your red flags. Great. So I guess we'll go ahead and get started with some appetizer questions. What's your love language? By the way, this is going to be a lot. I'm going to have a lot less red flags than I would have 10 years ago. I stopped drinking 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I wish you could have done a podcast with like 26-year-old me because it would have just been. Should we role play and pretend you're 26? I, I don't think you're going to like me. If I, <laughs> 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 I think this will be an eight minute podcast. Yeah. Amazing. We can talk about we could talk about it all. Well, sorry. You, what was the, what was the question you asked? I forget. Right? You have to listen. I know. I'm sorry. That's a red flag. You're right. So what's your love language? Uh, so I, I thought going into it, I would be physical touch, but I'm actually uh, quality time just more than physical touch, but it's quality time and physical touch. Yeah. Are, pretty high up there but we're gonna get into some main course questions now do you have any fetishes no i'm super like again i i moved so i went to vegas for two weeks when i was like 25 and i stayed for a year and a half so i and i came and i just like was like i'm here like i'm chilling here and i so like i got it all out of my system where now i'm like my fetish now is like I want to be really nice to a girl and I want her to be really nice to me. Yeah. Yeah. Just just kindness. Is yeah, key. it's new because I didn't grow up around that and I didn't like have it in my twenties. Right. So now I'm like, wow, it's really nice when someone just like you care about someone and they care about you and it's sweet and that's my new thing. Do you think that playing uh, AJ Soprano has ever like? translated into your real day-to-day -day life has has like any of the tendencies that your character had i'm not that good of an actor i just i would i'm like <laughs> i'm like oh they're paying me i go read this thing and then i go home like it wasn't my like even at like as soon as sopranos was over i was like all right i'm done like i told my manager don't call me anymore and have you always been a nice guy no no that's what i'm saying when i before but that's really brand new yeah 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 it's nice it's like refresh like so about Four, five years ago, I decided I was going to take a year off of having sex completely, no dating, no nothing. And just I wanted to, like, change my relationship with sex and and how I saw. I wanted to, like, feel like I did again when I was 17 and be like, oh, my God, this is such a, like, this is a nice, like, it's really sweet of you to sleep with me instead of being like, yeah, like, when do I come? Like, right. you know what I mean? So you just want to know what it feels like to be a simp. 
No, not no, no, no. I will never be walked over or that. But it's like I want it to be everything to be reciprocal. Like I want it to be like, hey, we're in we're in this relationship because we both really want to be. Like both of my complaints from the last two girls I dated, they were like, we don't. I, I we don't feel needed by you, and in my head I was like, yeah, because you're not, <laughs> yeah, you know. But really, I was like, well, the truth is, like, I don't need you, and and that's that's what was part of that spending that year alone was like I really realized like, I don't need sex, I don't need a relationship, like I want these things, and if I could have them in a healthy way in my life, like I think that's great. But there's no desperation anymore of like. Man, oh, am I gonna get laid tonight? Like, I don't have that thing that I used to have, where I was like, "Oh, I need like you know, a a, a woman has something over me." Or the, instead, it's just like this mutual thing where I'm like, "Wow, hey, we really get along. Let's see what if we can have this like healthy thing and make it work." And yeah, but then women don't feel needed by me, which is apparently a problem. I can see where that would be a problem. Yeah, but it's they're wanted, which is isn't that great? Like. I, I think that it's important that everyone feels wanted, but it's also important that people feel needed too. Have you ever had a threesome? I lived in, didn't you hear the other? I went to Vegas uh, for two. The way that you just reacted to uh, that saying, is a red flag. I went to, no, because I you just said. You looked at me like I'm an idiot for only, asking you that. I would have never. Okay, listen, whore. <laughs> I would have never looked at you that way if I didn't say five minutes ago, I went to Vegas for two weeks and stayed alone for a year and a half. What do you think I was doing there? I know now. I wasn't trying to learn about hotels. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was having I was having fun. You were a pro play poker player and you were playing your cards right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, you know, but yeah, there was but honestly, I don't really uh like threesomes. It's hard enough dealing with one broad. I don't I'm not trying to Yeah. I'm not trying to like, you know. Yeah. I'm not I don't like entertaining. Like, you know, and a lot of times on dates like I feel I hate first date. This is the first first date I've been on in the first date I've been on in nine months because like once I stopped dating the person I was dating before, I was like, I just need, I, I can't, I can't do it. I don't enjoy, cause you know, a lot of people are boring, you know? And then you go on a date and you find like you're entertaining and it's like, Hey, I got out of the business years ago, sweetheart. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm not here to fucking. It's a red flag that you call people sweetheart. Well, I don't, but that's do like. you say like uh, honey and kid too? No, no, no. But that's like when when I'm talking like that, like, hey, I'm not here to fuck. And I don't say that, but that's what I'm thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like when you go on a date and Cutie. a girl. No, I'm not. That's like my dad. Like, okay. I'm not. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not my shit. I'm just but, seeing how far I can push you. <laughs> yeah. I, but I did hear you say you call your boyfriend daddy. I do. Uh... And the, the last, so the. The last relationship I had, there was like a mama dada thing that we did, but then one other one before that, uh, I did it, but it, it's very like, it has to be the right thing. Like I've dated many women where that, like if that came up, I'd be like, oh, this is weird. But for some reason, the last one that I had, we got into this thing where it was like, it was like, okay, mama. Like, you know? Yeah, yeah what's yeah. up, mama? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this and is the first relationship I've ever had where I've had the, the daddy thing. Yeah, yeah. The first one ever. Otherwise, I, hmm. And then the first girl who we did it with, uh, we stopped because it got weird because there was one time like she'd always be like, okay, daddy, like and all this stuff. And then one time like she was like, can you hear me? And I might have like pushed mute on the phone and she was like, hello. She was like, dad. And I was like, <laughs> dad. <laughs> and I was like, and then like, and then I told her, I was like, you know, I heard you. And she was like, heard me what? I was like, you said dad. Like, and then we <laughs> I had a similar slip like two weeks ago. I was yeah. getting in the elevator and I was like, let's go, dad. And I said, and I felt like I just, I was like, uh, I felt like I hit a wall because I didn't mean to, to say dad. It was just like I was being short for daddy. Uh huh. And then he didn't acknowledge it. And then there was this awkward tension in the elevator where it's like, he knew that I called him dad and I knew that I called him dad and we couldn't then when the do doors opened it was like a sigh of relief because it was just yeah. that's an awkward fuck up and then when a girl calls you dad you're like should i be dressing different like i'm like should i be driving a certain like, kind of car new like new balance yeah like i like dad like it just felt it felt so weird but then it also reminds you of what it's like to have a kid how do you feel about kids uh here's the deal i don't want kids right now but i feel like if I don't have kids, I'm going to regret it when I'm 60. Yeah. You know? So I'm like, I feel like I should have a kid and I would. Uh, I, I don't know. It, it's tough because I'm, I'm very, um, 
like selfish with my time and I really appreciate like good sleep and things like that where I'm like, I don't want to give up good sleep because I have a child. I don't want to give up these things that, you know, because I've been, I haven't drank for 10 years. I've been basically sober. Some people argue not because it's like, you know, I'll fucking gamble and right. whatever. Sp- smoke well, weed it sounds sometimes. like 60s just around the corner for you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so, <laughs> I'm such an old man. <laughs> I really am. Like I'm very. Kids might be more in your future than you think. No, but I, I'm very selfish with my time. Like I don't want to, I don't want to do things that I don't want to do. That's probably like my biggest red flag is yeah. like when it's time to, and another probably huge red flag I have is I hate this whole traveling thing that everyone, every girl on every fucking dating app now is like, but I don't like to travel. Like I want my adventure partner. And I'm like, no, no, no. That's not what I, no sweetheart. <laughs> that is, that's not going on. <laughs> that's not going on with me. Like I'm, I don't, I don't find traveling fun. So like, yes, okay, if once a year, twice a year you want to travel and like I'll I'll do it, but don't expect me to be like, I'm super into this and making plans just because I fucking hate it. I hate traveling. I hate being away from like like ladies, what are you running from? That's what I want to know. Cause all these women want to, oh my God, I just want to travel. I, I wait for uh, to have a couple days off just so I could travel. And this is like, what do you I love being home. I yeah. love my bed. I love like I've set it up so where it's like, oh, this is my space. And then people just want to like get away from their space. Yeah. I don't know. It's probably a big red flag. It's, 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 I, I, I don't know if it's a red flag that you like your personal space so much. Maybe if you were in love and wait, you're on a dating app. That's a red flag. Why are you on dating apps? I'm on fucking Raya. Come on. Yeah. I know. All the, all the famous people are on Raya. We know. Have you ever found anyone on Raya? Oh Yeah. The last girl I dated, amazing. And how long great. did that last? But here's, so I don't have any social media. And like that was something that she said in the beginning. And I was like, oh shit, like that's a big thing to me. Because I don't, I don't want to be on dates where the girl's like, hold on, I got to take a picture of our sushi for the 500 people who follow me. They think yeah. that like people care. I want to be like, no one fucking cares. Yeah. Like about what we're eating. Like, and I think there's like a delusional thing now where like people think, that people care what they're eating and care about everything they're doing. And it's like, oh, we have to show everyone. And I'm like, You're, it seems like a, like, I, but I, I'm an outsider in this because everyone has social media and everyone does that. But as an outsider, it seems very fucking crazy. Yeah. Like that people are like, oh, we're, we're going through like a drive through at whatever. And like, show, show my drink, what I got to drink. I'm crazy. And it's like, you're fucking, you're just like everyone else behind us <laughs> in this fucking line. Like you got a drink that's on the menu. Everyone else can do, like, what are you, what's so unique about it? There's nothing unique about what you're doing right now. It's that they're holding the Coca-Cola. Right, and it's like, oh my God, I got the, re- like, blah, like my mocha frap. It's like, ugh, and it makes me, I just, yeah. So that I just decided, like, I'm not dating. I'm, I'm, I'm good now. How long has it been since you've had sex? Uh, eight months, maybe. Wow, so Something you've like really that. gone a long time, and you don't drink alcohol. No. Do you smoke weed? Uh, I... I'm not like anti-smoking weed, but I haven't done it since like, you know, seven months, eight months. But like if it hits me, like if I'm like my last time I did, I was like at my friend's wedding. We were on a beach and it was like 2 a.m. And like the fucking Milky Way was above us and like the bioluminescent. Th- oh, and I was yeah. like, Yo, this is fucking this is a time. Like I'm with my best friend. Like I was just his best man. We thought about it for so like I was like and his wife and it was so amazing. And it was like, this is great. But I'm then like if I smoke weed just like sitting on my couch, I feel like a piece of shit. You know, because I did that for 20 years every day. Right. What do girls think when you go on a date with them and then you tell them that you're not having sex? Oh, no, that's not like if I went on a date tomorrow, I'd be like, if I'm into the girl, we'll have sex. Like, I'm not not having sex. It was for that year I wasn't having sex. And then COVID hit. So it became like two years or some shit. Like it was it was very and it just like. And it went from a thing where, like, before that, I was like, I can't go without sex. You know what I mean? Like, I I need like it was something that I thought I needed. And then like. I just wanted to, I was moving to Vegas for the second time, Mm -hmm. but sober just to play poker. And I was like, since I'm going to be there, like, I'm not going to find any girls in Vegas that we have common interests right now because I'm trying to like change my life and get better and do all this stuff. So I was like, I'm just going to work out every day. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to like try and change my life. I want to like learn how to cook and like just, you know. Yeah. I've thought about that, you know, because they say that it's like it's good and it's healthy to like have that time for yourself and like try to be a whole person and like really work on yourself. But if I did that, I'd be 40. How old are you? You're 39, 38? 
get off my set. You just said Leave. it. You just said if I didn't have sex for a year, I'd be 40. Sorry, I know simple math. I'm 35. Okay, I, I would have guessed even younger. It would take five. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You're good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> And I haven't even done this shit in nine months. Man, you're crushing this first <laughs> yeah. day. When I'm when I'm in the fucking groove, woo! Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I had a friend recently that was uh, at a party, and she kept saying how old she felt she was. She was like, "I'm so old, I'm so old." And one of my friends was like, "How old are you? Like 43?" And she was like, "30." Mm. It's girls, you got to be careful when you're saying how old you are. I just learned my lesson the hard way. It's very weird as like a dude because there's no, like if somebody was like, hey, are you 50? I'd be like, oh no, I'm 38. Like I, I there's zero, like I don't care. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's just. It seems like you don't care about a lot. Very true. <sighs> that's a red flag. That's, yeah. But when I do care, I care. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you that's, care a lot. And that's why it's like, I can't care about everything because then I would be my whole, like, I wouldn't be able to accomplish anything. Right. You know, like I, when I care, it's like, it's so, I was actually thinking the other day, like, what's more important to me than my life? Like, what's the most important shit? And I was like, I think being a loyal friend to like my best friends or like people in my life who I feel like deserve it. It's probably the only thing to me that's like more important than my life, you know, besides like the world or like, you know, some big grand thing of like, you know, like and peace in the world or this. But it's like being a, you know, the loyalty that, you know, my best friend has been my best friend for over 30 years. So like the loyalty I feel like he deserves from me and that I as a person should show like that is one of the few things I could think of that. That was the first thing I thought of that was like that's more important than my life to me. Yeah. Well, this conversation is going way too well. So back <laughs> when you were in your early 20s and you were drinking, what did a relationship look like with you? So I was raised in a home where I learned to argue in what a healthy person would say is the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which is um, once the argument begins, you can say anything because you're arguing. Yeah. You know what I mean? all. Right. It's like, it's like, no, but we, and then like the next day it's like, well, you said this. I'm like, we were fighting. Like it was in a fight. And I swear this is from the time I was five. Like I was really fat when I was 12 years old. No one ever made fun of me because I was like a fucking ninja. Like verbally, I could just crush everything anyone ninja karate chop someone to shreds it was just sh like like it, i just always had that sword and it was always on my back like it wasn't like oh it had to work up to this it was like because that's how my house was growing up man so you would say some fucked up shit F i remember one time i was day and this was the girl who told me like you can't speak to people that way and it like no one ever said that to me and it hit me like a fucking ton of bricks where we were on her couch and i was watching something and she was like, can you put that a little lower? And I took a second. I assessed how loud the show was. And I was like, no. <laughs> like, I can't put it lower. I feel like if I put it any lower, I won't hear it. And I feel like it's not that loud. So no. And then I kept watching. And she was like, oh, and like said something like to me. And I was like, this is why your whole family hates you. And she like, it really hit her. As, and I was like, I was like, oh, we're fighting. Like, we start, we're starting to fight. Like, I, I just, I just went. Like, I don't like to go from like one to 10 to 20. I'm like, let's go from one to 100. Right. Let's end this in Why wait? two minutes. Yeah. And she was like, she was like, do you care about me? And I'm like, yeah. And she was like, you can't speak to, like, you shouldn't speak to people you care about that way. And it was the first time that dawned on me. And then what happened? And then I, that was kind of like, you know, like right as or before I got sober and that started this whole journey where I started like yoga and meditation and this and really started like, I think when you're so such an addict and like so into pills and alcohol and this, it's one of the things you have to admit is like, hey, I'm a sensitive person and a lot of this stuff I'm doing is to not feel this s stuff because like I said, if I cared about everything. It's numbing. Right. It's, it's your way of... uh of numbing. Yeah. So like as I got sober, I had to start dealing with my feelings mm -hmm. and I wanted to do that in a healthy way. And you start learning all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, why would I ever want to speak yeah. to someone that way or speak to someone I care about that way or this? But again, in the way that I grew up, like that's what you just thought was normal. Like that's how everyone spoke to everyone. Like it was like, like I hear people in my family now say things to each other where I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. And then, but then I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's like, it's a Tuesday lunch at lunch. Like, that's how they speak to each other. And I'm so far away from that now 
that like it's when it uh, I'm like, holy shit. Like when you hear it, you're like, man, that was how I was living. Like it's just it's crazy. Well, you were telling me right before we got on this show and mm-hmm. I want to revisit this because I actually think it's pretty interesting. So you went on you, you say that like during a date you like to move a lot. You're very fidgety. Oh, no, not on a date. It, it just that's me. Just in general. Even sitting alone on my cat. Like I just I'm not somebody who like sits still. You've been pretty still. You're also locked into this chair. Right, yeah. There's, and like <laughs> this is right in front of my face. Like there's not much I can do here. But you know, just, yeah. I was just sitting here like this the whole pot. Yeah, like oh, go on. Like sorry, this is just, <laughs> this is my shit. Yeah. Um, tell me this story about this girl in the movie theater. So yeah, I was just, I was on a date and like 10 minutes into the movie I realized like, you know, as I'm, I'm moving around and I'm like doing this and all of a sudden I'm like, man, this chick hasn't moved. Like she just had like the whole time and then like, Minute 30, minute 40, minute 50. Now I'm not even watching the movie. I'm just like, is she going to move? Like, and no. Like, credits roll, and she's like, okay. Like, and I'm like, is this a robot? Am I on a date with a robot? And she was like, but I had known her for, I had actually known her for a while. Like, I wouldn't go on a fucking first date to a movie. It's corny. But, because you want to speak, obviously. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I was like, wow, I never noticed. Like, she, and, and now in my head, I'm like, am, do I move a lot? And, like, most people sit still for two hours. Like, I know I move more than most, but that's crazy, right? Like, I, I find it very hard to sit still for that long as well. Yeah. Um, but I also find it – how do you feel before I throw myself under the bus? <laughs> how do you feel about people that talk during a movie? Uh, it depends what the, what the talking is. You know what I mean? If, if you're like, Just if you like, want to like talk about your day, it's like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, what are you nuts? But if, you know, and if, if you missed something, that's all good. But if you miss something because you were on your phone, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not, you're, you're done then. Unless we're home. If we're home, like I'll rewind all this or that. But like, if, if we're in a movie theater, which I don't want to go to a movie theater anyway, I, I'm like, let's, let's not talk now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just talk move. A lot you can move movies? all you want. But... Oh yeah, feel free. Yeah. <laughs> but so do you do you talk during movies? No, but I am on my phone. But I also don't go to theaters. I don't go to movie theaters, but at home. That would drive me nuts. I love to listen to it in the background and then I just glance up during an entertaining part and then I just go right back to playing Candy Crush. Wow. So you want to hear what would happen if we were dating? Yeah. 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 And you said, babe, do you hear what I said? I said, babe, I'm always listening. That's what I'd say. And you say, but but so if you were trying to engage with me on something that was important to you and I was like, oh, I just fucking beat a level on Candy Crush. I'd be like, which one? Oh, that is such bullshit. I was. That is such bullshit. You so so you, you come in, you come in, you're like, oh my God, you're like, my, my cat died. And I'm like, dude, have you seen this new, like, whatever? Well, see, the thing is with Candy Crush, you can, you hit milestones and then you get treats. And so your treats can last like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and you get to use all the candies without having to watch the ads. And I, if my cat died, which I hate cats, so I'd be like, Thank Me God. too, flea allergic. But uh, same. Yeah. So I would just say like, did you get any free treats for us? Well, here's the thing. Since I'm a straight male, I wouldn't be playing <laughs> Candy Crush. I'd actually be, I'd actually be betting on sports and shit. <laughs> yeah. So like, I, that's what I would be doing. You know what I mean? Like, I'd be like, babe, I'd be like, there's 10 fucking minutes left in the thing, but I wouldn't even have to stop you. Right. Cause I could listen and watch at the same time. Yeah. So you don't, you don't care. I Is don't that what care. Saying? Yeah. I'd be like, that's fine. I, By the I way, fully believe you. That's a red flag. That's not a red flag. This is my show. I'm flipping the script on you. You don't that's get to a do that. Nope. If you don't, if you don't demand someone's attention when you're talking to them about something important to them if you think it's okay that a guy could be on his phone when you're saying something that's important to you to them that's a red flag i disagree you deserve more i don't (laughs) but also (laughs) (laughs) but i've got like a weird fucked up issue too where i yeah i can tell i mean (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah i there's a reason why you work here Yeah, you You can't be normal and yeah, yeah. Yeah. What what do you feel like is your shh? Oh come on! If if you uh, you're you're a fun date. How many credit (laughs) cards do you have in your wallet? Uh, I don't have a wallet. I have one credit card in my pocket, and baby, it always works. (laughs) So that's all I need. You feel me? If you date a guy with two credit cards, he ain't shit. (laughs) He's worried. He's worried about his credit. That's the problem. How many cards I got? One. Is it black? Yeah, of course. (laughs) (laughs) 
Come on. It's not a black card, but it's black. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think. I don't I don't even yeah. It's, it's just dark blue. Yeah, yeah. It uh oh, we have a problem. Uh it works, yeah. It's it's I only have one credit card in my pocket. What do you think your other red flags are? It's so I mean, the fact that who I was from the time I was twelve until twenty eight was like just I it was either drinking or doing drugs pretty much every day and just kept getting like deeper and deeper into a, you know, addict thing where like everything just became I would just say you have a past. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's, you know, it's one of these corny things like that's what makes me who I am today. But like <laughs> it it is it, like that's the re like uh, you know, I was talking to this girl who I used to date the other day and she was saying that both of us are the same. We're like, we're a house that's ready to be moved into, but it's a very specific house. But right. when somebody sees that, they're like, oh, I could, I, I'm turnkey. Like, I, I can go today. But it's like, like the one house in, uh, you know, Venice where it's like, oh, I don't know. It's like Japanese motif. And they're like this. And people are like, what? This is going to be hard to sell. But then somebody walks in, they're like, this is my house. Like, I'm, and that's how I feel like uh, I am. And she said, I am. So I'm like, oh, yeah, that feels really. Right. Like, it's like, I'm, I'm ready to go, but it's just for that specific person. Like, I think, again, a girl who like loves to travel and Instagram and this, like she would hate dating me. How do you break up with someone? Uh, it depends. Do you, are you a ghoster? Never. I would never, ever do that. I could never do that. No. You just... what, here's another problem. When you're sober, you feel everything. So it's not like I could go someone and call my friend, make yo, you want to go have a drink? You want to go do this? It's like, if I go somebody... I feel that until I fix it. You know what I mean? Until like I, but not that I would ever go someone, but there's other things that happen where you're like, I can't be a shitty person because I, it, it really sticks with me. Like when, again, when you're fucking sober, there's no distraction to be like, your friend's like, oh, let's go out tonight. And then you're like, oh yeah, I fucking ghost it. Like when I was 24, sure. You know what I mean? Like it was, I mean, there was a time where when I first started going out, like cell phones were barely a thing. People didn't always have cell phones on them or like your cell phone would be dead and you didn't care. It wasn't like, oh, my God, do you have a charger? Yeah. Like, it was like, yeah, who gives a fuck? So, yeah, there were there were totally times where it was like I would meet a girl and you hook up and then this and then three nights later you're out with another girl and then you're like, oh, hey, like and then she thought it was going to be something more. And by the way, like vice versa, you know what I mean? Like because there wasn't this constant line of communication that there is today of like. Within three days, you know everything about this person. And you're just like, oh, I met somebody and we had a good time. And then I thought it was one thing and they thought it was another. And then it happened. They just see you at a bar. Right. And it's like, hey, this is weird. Like, and you're like, oh, it is. Like, wh what do you think? How do you have you broken up with? I heard how you broke up with your husband. That was cool. Uh, yeah. That was I mean, dope. That was, I, I like that. Thank you. What? Uh, but how do you feel? What do you feel like is the appropriate? Well, I, I don't like to live with regret. Yeah. And so I'm very conscious of the way that I let people go. And it usually hurts me a lot because I try to come from such an honest place. Yeah. But this is a show is about you today, not me. So I always wanted to go on a date where I don't have to ask them any fucking questions. <laughs> I mean, I'm you just have to so, ask me shit. That's why I haven't been on a date in nine months. I just don't want to ask abroad. Like, so what are you? Yeah, what are you, what's your favorite color? Where'd you get your hair done today? It looks so, so pretty. Those earrings. Oh, it's like, shh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> um, if so, this is one of the last questions I ask. You got two more questions for you. So, yeah, yeah. so, uh, let's say you go on a date. You're sober. You don't drink, and the other girl gets a cocktail, and then gets another cocktail, and she drinks. Done. It's over. I I I, I established before we. Sorry, were you done with the question? Uh, yeah. I <laughs> I um. I established beforehand, like, hey, I'm sober, and like, if you have a glass of wine or you drink, like, that's cool. But I'm not. A, like into being around drunk people uh, no people is one thing but like if a i'm date. dating you and we're just getting to know each other like listen if i if I, if we go to your sister's wedding and you get drunk it's like yeah babe come on i'll take care of you make sure you're all right but if it's like hey we're just meeting and you're drunk like that happened to me in new york i went on a date and she's like oh i don't really drink and then like <laughs> Plot twist. Five tequilas later, we're walking wow. out of the restaurant. She's like, we got to go to Dwayne Reed so I can get cigarettes. I was like, goodbye. <laughs> like, I, was like, you, I was like, you go into Dwayne Reed. I'll wait out here. Yeah. And by out here, I mean down the train station and gone. Wow. So did you leave? Uh, no, no, no. I knew her. Like we were, we had been friends before. So I wasn't going to, I was, I wouldn't just, I wasn't going to just bounce on her. Yeah. But yeah, if, if there was a girl who like told me she didn't drink and then we were, went out and she got drunk, I would, I would not feel bad just bouncing. 
All right. Well, I know you have to get out of here. I appreciate your time. Next time, I'll unlimit. You have unlimited time. I know. Time. I know. It's okay. Yeah. You'll, you're going to be back. Last question. The dessert question. We can make it short. You have, a, you have one sentence. What is the sweetest thing you've ever done for someone? Uh, I told them to delete my number. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, uh, That's actually the best answer I've had yeah. so far. No, no, no. Uh, well, I don't know. Like, ever. I mean, it's, it's a long thing to think about. But I can tell you the last girl I dated... Um, we were in LA and she was like, I've always wanted to go to Santa Barbara. So I booked a week trip for us to Santa Barbara and I sent her, um, an Airbnb of like this shitty little play. Oh, you just got like a lump in your throat. And I said I like, like a shitty <clears throat> Airbnb. Yeah. I'm like, this is supposed to be sweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I sent her like an Airbnb of this like really whack place. And I was like, yeah, but we will be out a lot and we'll like make it, you know, we'll make it fun and whatever. And then when like we pulled up in, uh, the car, it was like a beautiful house. And yeah. Like beautiful backyard with a hot tub and like multiple bedrooms and like a really, really yeah. nice place and like on the beach and just like and we had like a great time and That's, she was that is sweet. I'm a sweet guy with a That's credit so card sweet. that works every time. That's so sweet. All right. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Where can people so people can't find you? No. You'll be I'm in your house, grid. off the grid. Yeah. But they can find you right here. Right here at YMH on the new podcast. Not today, pal. Not today, pal. Not today, pal. You can listen to that anywhere that you listen to podcasts. And can I just say shout out to Tom Segura because since he started testosterone, the amount of women who work here has gone up by like 800%. <laughs> so I just want to say thanks, Tom. Keep keep shooting in the buddy, whatever yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, it's fucking great. I'm, I'm truly soaking it up. First time I came to YMH, it was just like Nadav. You right. know what I mean? It was just like, but it was just, it was a, it was a boy. Like when I went into the bathroom, there had someone just shaved and there was like hair all over the sink and like the razor and I was like oh like okay which I'm cool with but like to how it is now like you're in a fucking dress and you have jewelry like this is way to go Tom thank you yes and thank you guys for watching another episode of First Date with me as your host Lauren Compton I'll see you next time First Date baby are you really drinking a glass of milk with dinner First Date I can't wait you told your mom about me Delete my number.